Hey everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug ciprofloxacin, also known by the brand name Cipro and others. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Ciprofloxacin belongs to the fluoroquinolone class of antibiotics. Fluoroquinolones tend to end with the suffix floxacin, like levofloxacin or norfloxacin, and so on. So let's go over how fluoroquinolones work to fight against bacteria. In order to survive and thrive in a host, like you or me, bacteria need to be able to replicate themselves. Before a bacteria replicates or divides, they first need to make a copy of their DNA, which would then be passed to the replicated cell. So in order to copy their DNA, bacteria rely on certain enzymes to help get the job done. Some of these very crucial enzymes are called topoisomerase 2 and topoisomerase 4. I won't go into all the details in this video, but simply put, without these two enzymes, bacterial cells would not be able to replicate, and eventually the bacteria would die off. So again, topoisomerase 2 and topoisomerase 4 are crucial enzymes that facilitate bacterial DNA replication. And it just so happens that fluoroquinolones work by inhibiting these two enzymes, thereby inhibiting bacterial DNA replication. Like I said, that's not the whole story, but it is the gist of it. Again, fluoroquinolones inhibit the enzymes topoisomerase 2 and topoisomerase 4, thereby inhibiting bacterial DNA replication. So what type of bacteria can fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin work on? Well, ciprofloxacin is a broad-spectrum antibiotic, which means that it can act on a wide variety of bacterial infections. This includes both gram-positive and gram-negative susceptible bacteria. To find out which bacteria are susceptible to Cipro, a culture and sensitivity test should be performed. The culture test can tell us what bacteria is present in a given sample, and the sensitivity test can tell us which antibiotics will likely work best to treat the infection. So ciprofloxacin can be used in various respiratory infections, skin infections, intra-abdominal infections, urinary tract infections, and more. Ciprofloxacin is most often ordered orally or intravenously, but it is also available as an ophthalmic solution for various eye infections, including bacterial conjunctivitis. In terms of side effects, fluoroquinolones may cause nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Antibiotic-associated diarrhea, which is usually three or more loose, watery stools per day, is common when starting many antibiotics. Diarrhea should improve once the antibiotic is completed, but this is not always the case. It's important to always consult your doctor before taking any anti-diarrheal medications if this occurs, as they can actually worsen the diarrhea. Fluoroquinolones can cause QT prolongation, which can be seen on an ECG, and tachycardia, which is an abnormally increased heart rate. Now we won't go into too much more detail in this video, but it is also important to be aware that fluoroquinolones have been associated with tendinitis and tendon rupture, peripheral neuropathy, hepatotoxicity, central nervous system effects, and more. So what are some of the contraindications and precautions? Well, fluoroquinolones should be avoided in those with myasthenia gravis, as fluoroquinolones may exacerbate muscle weakness in this population. Also avoid fluoroquinolones in those who have a history of tendon disorders or those who have experienced tendinitis or tendon rupture. Patients who are above 60 years old, patients taking corticosteroids, and patients with heart, kidney, or lung transplants have an increased risk for tendinitis or tendon rupture. Use cautiously in those with impaired renal or hepatic function, those with CNS disorders, and more. Using ciprofloxacin with tizanidine is not recommended. Taking these drugs together can cause symptoms of drowsiness, slurred speech, confusion, weakness, or low blood blood pressure. Always complete the full course of antibiotic therapy even if symptoms improve. Increase fluid intake to decrease the risk of dehydration, especially if diarrhea is present. Be aware of the drug-to-drug -drug interactions with fluoroquinolones, just some of which include warfarin, theophylline, oral antidiabetic drugs, and more. These drugs can cause life-threatening interactions in severe cases. And that's about it for the basics of ciprofloxacin. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.